Hello, hello. Welcome to A Dreamer's Experience, Conquer the Chaos. My name is Sean Laurie, and as an entrepreneur and a father of four, I want to give you guys different tools or insights, either for myself, my wife, or others that will not only help you personally, but also as a parent, conquer the chaos. And hey, guys, I'm Tiffany Lowry, and I co-host alongside my husband. I do wear many hats, and the two that I'm the most proud of is being a mother and a wife. We've had many chaotic moments as a family and have somehow, some way, always managed to conquer the chaos. And that's why I'm excited to be here with you guys to share part of our journey. Yes, guys. So we are here with this amazing guy, Harold. Oh, man. He's running three restaurants. He's building businesses. He's he's. A uh, consultant, man, like pretty much anything you need, he he can do. Like he's probably one of the most brilliant business minds I know personally. Um, and just to see his growth has been such a amazing and, and, and a blessing. Um, and so the fact that he's even you know made time for us, I, I feel I feel privileged because this this guy's the man. Uh, but yeah, guys, so you know we're we're doing um, Father June, and so I wanted to shed light on fathers that's doing some amazing things and just let them to help you on certain things and so um i'm excited man how you doing harold i'm doing great bro just definitely want to appreciate you for having me on here um i love what you're doing i love what you guys are both doing i've been seeing it i mean shoot you've pretty much been dedicated to what it is that you're doing right now as long as i've known you and that's been like what almost 10 years now or something yeah. like that probably that's, shoot yeah. crazy crazy when yeah, you say awesome. say the the number I know, right so I yeah I'm, I'm happy to be on here I feel old. I feel old. So, um, matter of fact, you you can start, old wifey. Let's All right. let's see if you can get one with a good one. Oh wait, actually, actually, I'm sorry. Before that, I always gotta do an icebreaker. Okay, so All I'm gonna throw you for a loop right now. All right. <laughs> All right. So, um, what is your favorite thing about being a father? Dang. All right, why don't you have to hit me with that one? <laughs> uh, favorite thing about being a father is, I mean, seeing my kids grow. Like, it's been really cool to just see, like, uh, like myself within them mm -hmm. and being able to, like, like, see just the little things that I do that come out in them, sometimes bad and good. <laughs> but, like, it's just really cool to just see how, like, being a father can transcend to your kids even when – it's not something that like you're doing or saying it's like they just pick up on it yeah it's like almost sometimes like it's not even like it's just happening yeah you don't even know what's happening so yeah definitely i like that seeing the reflection of myself yeah yeah i, I can relate for sure <laughs> i know yeah. it's trippy sometimes <laughs> be like oh i do that yeah she yeah. she gets on me at times when when my kids be doing certain things i'm like She's like, that's you. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Gotcha. All right. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, so um, you have a very unique background. Uh, can you go ahead and share some of that and um, how that has shaped you into who you are today? Yeah. Um, so I was raised by my grandmother um, mm -hmm. when I was about two years old. Uh, my uh, father was actually jumped. Um, he was in a, he was put into a coma. He was in a coma for about a month, oh, wow. and uh, he actually died for like a certain amount of like, like I want to say like, I think it was like thirty seconds or forty five seconds or something like that. Oh, and back to life, and then, um, and then yeah, he was still in a coma for like a month after that. And so at that point, like it was kind of like uh, my dad and mom just kind of split up after that, and I went to go stay with my grandmother, and then um, from there it was like pretty chaotic household because like it's not like my grandmother was just like that grandma that was with her kids and then I went to just go live with her it was like my grandma had just got out of a divorce mm. like maybe you know I want to say maybe like 15 years or 10 years before I was born or something like that so she was actually living with my with her brother which is my which was my great uncle and so and inside of that house was all of her kids so it would be like, it would, was my, my dad was in and out because he was in a gang. So he was in and out of the house. And then there was my uncle, uh, my dad's brother, and then his sister. And then we had another uncle. And that guy was like always, he was, he was on drugs. He was stealing, whatever, all kinds of stuff. He's clean now. We have a good relationship. But before that, 
it was just an interesting household, you know? So I was kind of like the, I was like, kind of like the golden child in a sense, but also Mm -hmm. like the kid that didn't really get like a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. So, because it was like my grandmother was basically like parenting them, but also like parenting me at the same time. And one thing that I noticed was like, as I grew up and as I like got older, I started seeing, oh, like, I'm kind of like the person that's supposed to like do better than mm. like my grandmother's kids. Mm. Almost like she was like trying to make me the the one that was going to be successful because she felt like she messed up with them. At least that was my interpretation yeah. of it all. So it kind of that it impacted me in terms of like I always like put a lot of pressure on myself. Mm. Um and like even till this day, I, I'm gonna just get transparent with y'all so like yeah. <laughs> yeah. like even till this day like I like struggle with it's like everything that I do is essentially to like make me show up on the radar of my parents or my grandmother even though she mm-hmm. passed away already so um and then that pressure it's like I want that but then at the same time even when I achieve these things it's like almost like the things I'm doing right now like have have been I'm seeing how wow I'm doing a lot of these things because I'm trying to be seen by mm. like my family. I want them to recognize that what I'm doing is is good and so mm. it's an interesting like battle to like balance knowing that I'm good at something but then also like why am I actually doing it so, yeah I, wow. I was I was actually gonna ask you too did that force you in a way have to because you saw a lot it sounds like growing up and things so did it force you to have to grow up faster than what you probably needed to as well yeah i mean like i would i would say at first it stunted my growth so like mm. at first as a kid it was like you know so my i used i got used to seeing my dad like even though i was living with my grandmother i would still like see him up until i was like six or seven years old so when i was seven he literally like moved out of the house went to go live with some other girl that lived like right around the corner like mm-hmm. not right around or maybe like a mile, two miles away or something. And I remember like how like struck my confidence was like when that happened. Mm. And so at first it was like, I felt like I was always being, like my grandmother wouldn't let me do anything. It was always like, like she would let me do things, but it was always like, you can't cross the street till you're this age. You can't like, you know, other kids are going to the park and I'm staying at home. Mm. Like, you know, it was just, I, I felt like I was being babied all the time. Yeah. And so there was, there was that piece of it. But then all, when I was, uh, when she was, when I was 16, um, probably 15 in high school, I think I was a sophomore, she got diagnosed with cancer. Oh. And like at that point, and at that point it was me, we had moved to Reno Valley because at first we lived in Carson, grew up in Carson. Oh. I moved to Reno Valley uh, when I was in high school. And that time it was just, me, my grandmother, my uncle, and uh, my aunt who was in and out. And um, at that point, it was like, once she got sick, I kind of was able to just do whatever. Like, I, yeah, I, I was yeah. able to flow. I was able to do a lot. And I would also say this, too. Um, being with her, being, like, babying me and stuff, and mm-hmm. her being a grandmother, like, I was able to manipulate her a lot. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I was able to, like, get around not doing my school work and things like that. Like, oh, this is why my report card didn't come in. Like, everything worked. Like, yeah. You know, she, she probably knew or my uncle probably knew, but in my head, it was working. Yeah. And so um, when she, once she got sick, I kind of like spiraled, like, mm-hmm. to where I did whatever I wanted to do. And then when she passed away, it was really like, so I was 17. And at that point, it was like, my uncle was, he was dealing with his issues with around it, you know, his, his mother just passed away, you know, yeah. so he started struggling, kind of went into drugs a little bit and whatnot. And then my aunt was like, she's all dealing with her stuff too. And so at that point it was like, Oh shoot, I just got to figure out what I'm going to do. So my uncle ended up running the house. He, um, we lost the house in like seven months. We got, oh, a big, yeah. you know, we, uh, foreclosed and, I had to pretty much figure out what I was going to do. And mm. so from there, it was kind of like, I was like li- living on people's couches, going to this house, that house, staying with, staying with the aunt, staying, going to go see my mom or whatever, even though I didn't care to see her, but I just wanted to go sleep on her couch. Like, yeah. But nobody knew. 
And mm. so at that that moment was like, yeah, that was like the time where I had to grow up exceedingly fast because mm. I didn't have anyone to lean on anymore. Mm. So <laughs> is this? I mean, I appreciate you sharing because it's getting my brain flowing too. But um, so did you even get a chance to really process your grandmother passing? Because it sounds like basically your your grandmother was like your mom, right? In a sense. Yeah. So yeah, like, did sure. you even really get to process like that? Because like, and, and I'm just thinking as well, like you said, like, you know, that's still in you almost as far as like, you felt like that pressure to like, to be successful and do well. And, you know, I'm confident in saying this, and I'm sure you, you probably know that too, that your grandmother, your grandmother, if she was here today, she would be so proud of what you're doing, you know what I mean? And the things you have accomplished. But did you even get a chance to like really process, I guess, um, her death? I mean, to be honest, like, I, I don't know if I can say fully. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I remember when, when it happened, like, because I, I, I'm not the person to talk to about like death. Because like when someone yeah. dies like this close to me, like I literally like I have a very interesting way of dealing with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm like the guy that becomes the clown at the funeral, not like in a bad way, but like I'm just like I'm joking around a lot. Like mm -hmm. I'll say the thing that is just not appropriate to say. Like, like yeah. so what are we gonna do with this PS5? Like, what's up? Mm -hmm. Like, but it's also just because like. I don't know. I don't know if it's a, I don't think I've been desensitized. I just think no. that like, I have a different like perspective of it. Yeah. Um, like dealing so, with it in yeah. a sense. Yeah. Cause and I do the same. I do similar things. So I understand. I can relate to that. Right. Right. Um, but what I'm, I'm learning now is that, yeah, like that grieving th process is real. And that's just like kind of been my defense mechanism for how I mm -hmm. deal yeah. with that grieving. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like for, my brother just passed, my brother passed away in, uh, um, December, rest in peace, Drake the Ruler. Um, and when he passed away, like, I didn't realize how much I was grieving until like a couple months, a couple weeks ago, low key. Like, I, I realized, like, oh, wow, like, I'm starting to see myself make certain decisions and whatnot and doing certain things that, like, just aren't really beneficial to me. Yeah. And it was just taking the time to realize, like, oh, like, I'm actually like hurting right now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I just can't really like tell what's going on. Yeah. And so with my grandma, like I remember at first, like I didn't think, like, I had a dream literally right when it happened. I had a dream that like I saw her walk into like our garage. We were all hanging out in the garage. She walked out, and there was a big bright light behind her. And then literally, my uncle opens the door and wakes me up, and he says, "Come say goodbye." She, Granny's gone. Mm. And so. And so in that, like, I had already felt like this piece to the point where I was just staring at her, like, what's going on? But I remember, like, maybe a few months after that, I got in an argument with my aunt, and that was, like, the first time I ever, like, cried about it. Like, wow, she's really gone. Yeah. Um, but I don't really know, like, if there was more to process it, because to be real, like, just being 100%, like, I'm at that place now where it's, like, so far removed that I almost don't even, like, yeah. remember her. Yeah. Kind yeah. of, it's been like so long. So long, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I almost forget. Like, dang, like for half of my life, this woman raised me. You know, yeah. Um, but you know, it's crazy, man. It's, I I can go on for days, bro. Because no, like, no, no. I mean, I, yeah, I didn't mean to. Like, I went to because I help some of my clients as well. So I went to like strictly like you know like <laughs> coach dig mode. I was like, okay, let me. Yeah, like, no, it, it's good. Things. Like, I'm because I'm exploring it right now too. So like, yeah, I, I'm cool with it. Like. But, you know, like I, as I've been getting older and dealing with a lot of stuff and seeing issues that I have and whatnot and, you know, going to therapy, going to coaching, stuff like that, you know, now I'm starting to even see like, wow, like, um, like, where did my grandma come into this? You know, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what what was she doing, too? Because I always at first it was just all about my dad and my mom. And now it's like, well, what am I, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just crazy how, how family has a massive impact huge huge i tell i tell i one of the guys i'm working with right now like i was telling him there's so much underlying trauma that he has and like as we're like you know undercut like taking the covers off on these things he's like man like i didn't realize this even existed you know right right Fact. not to not to sidetrack but i think it's really like i think it's really dope just to see like 
you recognizing those things and being okay with being open to it. Cause right. Like um, we see that there's like a stigma behind like men sharing and really digging into like these, these, you know, things and these traumas and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think it's really dope. Just, just, just from a woman's perspective. (laughs) Yeah, man. So, um, well, okay. My, my other question is how many I know, but for the, the listeners and viewers, how many kids do you have and how was your journey, you know, becoming a father? Yeah. Um, so I have three kids, um, oldest Naomi, um, she's about to be six in five days, six days, yeah, six days. Okay. And then, um, yes, yeah, so that's crazy. And then Kyrie, she turned, she turns, she just turned four in May and Isaiah's two. Isaiah Khalifa. So he just turned two in March. And um, man, like the journey has been interesting because it's been like the the hardest thing for me is, is just realizing like, wow, I actually don't know how to do this thing like mm-hmm. at all. Because yeah. like, especially because it was like, like I said, I was raised by my grandmother. I wasn't raised by my, my mother and my father. And yeah. so like there's certain things I'm sure with my grandma, it's like, she's not parenting me as if I'm like her actual son. Mm-hmm. Like there's just something chemically missing there that she can't have that my mom has, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's like a certain bond towards me. And so like growing up, like seeing my kids, it was like, I didn't really, there'd be times where I would just be like, yo, I'm going to mess this up. Like, mm-hmm. and, and I don't know who to go to. To, yeah. even, to even figure it out um but what I've been learning the most is just like understanding that like I have to focus like on me still like I have to like have a lot of self-awareness and like focus on like making myself the best person I can be mm-hmm. because at the end of the day like that's what they're picking up on mm-hmm. so they're like I don't want to get into this place where like I idolize the idea of my kids being better than me because I feel like that's going to enslave them. Mm. So, yeah, I don't know. Where, that's pretty much. No, I, I, I like that, man. And <clears throat> Excuse me. And the fact that you understand that already, you know, because a lot of people way older, honestly, don't, you know, understand that as far as like, man, for me to be the best version of myself, to be the best parent that I can be, I have to work on me as well. Right. right? There's a lot of things. It's like, None of us are perfect. We're all screwed up in some type of way. You know what I mean? And so when we can address those, it's only going to make us a better or us that's that's married or the fellas out there, better husbands, better, better fathers. You know what I mean? A better friend. Right. All those different things. It trickles down. So the fact that you understand that, man, that's I mean, you're already on your way. Right. None of us are perfect. Like there is no quote unquote handbook, Um, you know, so that's that's why I always try to tell like the parents I help, like there's no technically no handbook, like, oh, this is how you should do it because every child is different. Just like when you was in the household and you say it was like crazy, right? Like, hey, your grandma dealt with you a certain way and maybe it did work, maybe it didn't. But with other kids, she had to also do it a certain way. You right. know what I mean? Because they wouldn't respond. Right. So, go ahead. You got some. Oh, I thought you had something you wanted. <laughs> no, that, that's facts though because like I'm – that was probably the biggest thing in the journey too, is like, there ain't no copy and paste on this mess. No. Like, it was like, all right, cool. I had Naomi. And then there was a certain way we had to raise her. And now I have a middle child, Kyrie, after Isaiah was born, but I didn't really notice the middle child until Isaiah was born. So it's like, yeah. w- one thing that like one of my coaches told me that was like super huge. is he was like, every time something like that happens in your life, like you're not the same person anymore. And the same thing happens to my kids. So the moment we have, the moment I got married, I was no longer, another, I was no longer the same person. Mm-hmm. Like, or at least like everything changed. So yeah. I started changing. The environment yeah. changed. And so, um, and then same thing. Once we had our first kid, everything, the environment shifted. So now everything's different. And then now the second kid and the third kid. But even when the second kid comes, now the first kid's environment changed. So they're a different person. Mm -hmm. And so like now I have to, I can't just like copy and paste the same parenting methods to each one and expect it to work or even just 
continue to stick with the same parenting method as they're growing. Yeah. Like you can't talk to a, a three year old the same way you talk to a six year old. Like yeah. that just wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. So like I know people that do that. Like I know parents that still like talk yeah. to their kids like they're little kids when it's like, no, they're like they're growing. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, so yeah. Not to say that I'm right or wrong, you know. No, just, no. You know, that's it, but thing. but I agree because we're constantly as people, we should constantly be evolving, right? Right. Like you shouldn't be Harold should not be the same person he was five years ago. Right. Right. So it's the same thing with our kids, same thing with parenting. Because if not, and then that's where the issues happen. A lot of times, from my experience from dealing with parents, is a lot of times where where um the child and them start bumping heads is because the child is growing. And you're still treating them as whatever. They were 10 years old. You know what I mean? You have to meet them with where they're at. You know what I mean? Right. Same thing, relationships, all those aspects. So with, with that being said, because, you know, you do have, have three young kids, you're married, um, and you have your business and things like that. So I was just wondering, how do you actually balance uh, your business and your home? Like, how are you able, because you're, you're also basically, you're, or you're running three restaurants, you know, like, like I said, you have a lot on your plate. So how how are you able to balance that? Yeah. Um, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the best at it for sure. Um, I'm not really sure that like I even believe that there is like a such – like I can't define what that looks like. Like, I can't define what, like, balance looks like. Um, so, the, 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 for me, it, it's more of a um, a priority thing. Mm. It's like, I'm just, I'm making sure that what's the priority is being the priority. So, for instance, like, for me, number one is spending time with self and spending time with God. Yeah. So, it's like, that has to be priority over even my kids in some yeah. cases, most cases. Um it, and what that means is more like, it doesn't mean like, oh, hey, I'm praying, stop bugging me. But it means like when I'm scheduling my day, I'm understanding that I need to make time for God so that there isn't any interruption or whatnot. Yeah. Um, and then same, and then it just goes from there. It's like, it's God, and then it's my, my, my wife and it's my kids. And it's just understanding like, there's going to be times where I have a week where I missed a lot of stuff I had to do for business. And, and yeah, it might hurt, but at the end of the day, I'd rather lose that than lose my family. Mm, yeah. So, um, and then it's just, you know, it's, it's just making, making the, the, making it all up. Like I'm okay with makeup time. I'm okay with like, yeah. I, this, I gotta make up, but what's really what it is is I need to adapt. Yeah. Cause it's like, that's what I'm learning as, as the kids get older, something changes as they go to school. Like there is no routine. Like, what are we talking about? Like, yeah not with three kids, not with a wife, like there's no, not with business. No. Like I can't sit here and be like, I'm going to do this every day for the next five days. Like, no, yeah. one kid's going to wake up at 4 a.m. <laughs> one kid's going to, you know, pee in the bed. Like one kid's going to get sick out of nowhere and then he's going to get the other one sick and then they're all going to be sick. And next thing you know, it's like, dang, my kids are sick all year long. <laughs> like, like there's a little bit, I feel like that sometimes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, I just learned to just put like, do my best to put priority first and then make a make make adaptations quick like make yeah. pivots quick like oh shoot okay this didn't work this one time like it needs to switch like i, I can't like if, if i have a meeting that interrupts an appointment that i had for naomi yeah like like naomi's in speech therapy right now so like mm -hmm. she has to go every monday to thursday and that's been like something i've had to adapt to mm -hmm. and there'd be times where it was like hey i'm constantly showing up late yeah. Like it needs to be quicker to where it's like, all right, no, we need to make an adjustment to this because if it keeps happening, it's going to drain all my energy. And then mm. it's just going to make the next few days and next weeks harder and harder. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, like you said, it costs you adapted. I, I think that's, that's key, but I, I hear at times, you know, from different people, just business and stuff like that. Like they say similar, like, Oh, there's no balance. And pretty much if, if I personally don't believe in this, but I know for some people they do. And I was just, wondering your thoughts as far as like there is no balance if you want to be successful if you want to run this business you gotta pretty much it's like pretty much focus on the business and the family you know they're just 
they'll get the they'll get the results after, right? They can benefit afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, that's just you know, I just said no, that's not how I want to do things. But for you, is that something that you live by? Um, and if so, just for like someone that's listening or watching, that's like you know, oh man, I every day you know I have to I have to grind with this business, this and this and this, and you know, a wife, girlfriend, whatever the person I'm dating, you gotta gotta be pushed to the side kid you gotta kind of be pushed to the side for right now this is what i'm doing but you will benefit as this takes off what yeah. is like your thought and i'm sure you meet people like that too a lot but um yeah, yeah. Um, what was your thought on that um teach their own and the only reason i say that is like i'm not going to say that it's wrong because like some kids need more attention than other kids do like yeah. some like, I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that I just can't say it's right or wrong because at the end of the day, like I wouldn't do it. Cause I don't, yeah. I think for me, it's like, I don't even necessarily want to take that chance. Yeah. Um, but I think it's okay. If someone decides that they want to set a priority over another priority at the end of the day, that's their priorities. True. And so if that's what they want to achieve in their life, they're probably going to achieve it to a higher level than I am. <laughs> like, yeah. but but the, there's a there's a key component and like I, I have to throw this out there is like there's a key component to me is like I feel like when you chase money like or when you like working hard is gonna like it'll get you money but like I feel for me is leaving gaps for God to do work like that creates magic and like mm -hmm. I'd rather create magic than create money Cause like mm -hmm. money's not hard for me to do like creating magic. That's when it's like, Oh shoot. Four guys meet in a bar and decide they want to start a restaurant and the restaurants work does, you know, three, four, five million in the, in a matter of two, three years. Like that's magic. Like yeah. that. Did, and, and that wasn't coming from like, Oh, we're just grinding, 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 grinding. We allowed a lot of space for, for God to move. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I look at it like that. Like, you can set your priorities whichever way you want to set them. Yeah. But I think sometimes, like, we grind so hard and we're really just wasting time. Like, mm -hmm. it's like we're just kind of busybody. Like, that happens to me sometimes still. Like, where I'm just like, oh, man, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. I'm coming home late. I'm coming home late. And I realize, like, I sometimes get more done in, like, a four-hour day from 5 a.m. to 9, 9 a.m. than I would in a whole week of just, like, showing up at the office every day for eight hours a day. Mm. Like, you know, it's just, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at with it. No, I, I like that. That's good. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I feel the same way for me, especially, um, you know, I think I just told myself, especially as a, as a father, and I didn't, you know, I grew up um, not having that consistent father. Um, so I told myself I want to make sure I'm present, you know, right. in all ways. So like you said, for each his own, um, I'm sure that's, probably part of my experience as well right where it's just like hey i'm making sure i'm showing up any you know pretty much i can make my schedule so i will literally change my whole schedule right. to make sure i'm there for my kids if they have a certain event a basketball game whatever play right right you know? so i i definitely i definitely agree with you on that one yeah i think i think what you mentioned is key because it's like it's also just being okay with the consequences like and understanding that they're there like yeah. for instance like if there's there's times where there's meetings where if I have to cancel them in order to go see my kids, like I might have ruined a complete opportunity to do that. Yeah. But I have to be okay with those consequences of like, I'm gonna lose this opportunity. Yeah. Um, but I think it's also like a balance of just like knowing what the impact of it is going to be mm. for my family. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's like, you know, I guess one thing I also think about too is like I'm here <laughs> and you know, like I, I didn't have the best parents in the world. Yeah. I probably had, I'd probably rank them pretty low to be honest. <laughs> Just being real. And like a, a pretty, I and mean, you too, like we're all mm -hmm. here in this situation right now. We're creating stuff. Yeah. 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 And it's like, I think there's character that can grow, but I think the most important thing is just being honest. Like, yeah. You know, if you do miss that meeting with your kids or whatever it is, yeah. It's like you just be honest. Yeah. Like, no, Daddy that's... did it. Daddy was not. I was not thinking about you in this moment right yeah. now. Yeah. Like, 
and that's where I'm, I'm I messed up. Yeah. Like, mm. not this was more important than you. Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't more important, but for some reason I decided that it was. And obviously that can depend on what age they are and whatnot. Yeah, of course. Hated, but I just think it's just being honest and not like trying to hide around like why yeah. why you do certain things, which yeah, is something yeah. I, I did for a while because yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, or making excuses in a sense. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I mean, if you tell, you know, like you say, you tell your kids, hey, I missed, you know, whatever the, I, I, I couldn't make it to the park because daddy was closing a deal. And it's gonna change your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but even then, like that's like becomes manipulation, low key, you know? <laughs> Like, hey, this is the, I did this because of this. I was like, no, like I mean, you're like, Dad, we don't care that you just closed a million dollar deal. Yeah, exactly. Like, that we, nothing we, want, we won't play. We won't we want you to push us on the swing. Like, that's nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, Naomi asked me like I think it was like two nights ago. I put her to sleep, and she was like, she said, uh. She said, Daddy, how many millions of dollars do you have? <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't have millions of dollars. Like, and then, and then I even tried to start, like, this is where I knew, like, okay. And I, this is important because I think it's, like, we got to be mindful of when these moments happen yeah. and, like, think how, like, how did I handle that? Because I know that I immediately got defensive. Mm. Like, I felt like I had to, like – um justify for her mm. because in her head i have millions of dollars in the bank yeah i don't even know if she fathoms what millions of dollars are yet yeah but like and so for me i was like no i don't but i have businesses that make like millions of dollars or whatever and like I, it was almost like i had to like sugarcoat like yeah. trying to like get her to believe like that i did have that when it's just like mm. who cares like i don't need to so i was I was doing to her what I do around other people sometimes. Mm. And so, yeah, I just got to be mindful of like how myself comes out around my kids yeah. because Naomi's starting to get, I'm sure you, you guys probably know this more than I do with older kids, but she's getting to that age now where like, I feel like I have to prove myself to her. Mm. Yeah, like, like she starts to see my flaws now Yeah, and calls me out on things. And so I'm trying to get out of that place of like, I don't need to prove anything to you. I just need to be there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, and, and at the end of the day, I would say, too, which, you know, I'm sure you know, but just don't downplay your greatness. Mm. You know what I mean? You're doing amazing things. Um, but like you said, you got in that, you know, where you want down. Like, wait, what do you mean? Like, you know, don't. The reason why I say that, too, is because obviously I know you wouldn't want your kids to downplay their greatness. Right. right. And so even though, you know, with, with your with your um, like you say, your kids are starting to understand you're explaining certain things with them. Um, but just being basically mindful as far as like, hey, yeah, you know what? Dad is doing well in these areas. He can get better. Um, and knowing that you're enough, which I'm sure you do know that, that, that you're enough. And, you know, your kids look up to you, man. Even, even though your kids might call out your flaws, you know, yeah, it's yeah. crazy, which I'm sure you, you know. But it, it just blows my mind at times, you know, having four kids, um, just how much they look up to us. You right. know, I mean? especially to the dad, like. Like I say a lot, like as dads, we have a huge, like we set the foundation, you know what I mean? It's right. so, like, it's be like the littlest things that we're not picking up to. It could be whatever. You could literally just keep saying, I don't know, you hate Chinese food or something, whatever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they, they might used to love it, but now, yeah, I hate Chinese food. Yeah, what? Like, right. what happened? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I just wanted to just, wanted to just remind you of that, which I know you know. But No, I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yep. All right. Um, what's the biggest reason you think parents give up on their dreams? Um, I think the biggest reason that not only parents give up on their dreams, but pretty much anyone gives up on their dreams is um, a misunderstanding of time. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I think like, like us as like human beings, like we have like this finite idea of what, what time is, right? And so when you take out time of the equation of most circumstances, like you have a completely different perspective on it. A lot of times time is what gives us a negative perspective on certain something. So like, for instance, if like um, entrepreneurship, I want to I want to jump into entrepreneurship. So back when I didn't have a job, I wanted to jump into it. The main reason I didn't is because I'm thinking how much, how long is my money going to last? 
mm. time. I'm thinking, how long is my money going to last? Um, how long am I going to be able to pay for my car? When am I going to, you know, if I have an eviction notice on the door, it says three days, I get scared because I don't know what to do within that time. And so what, in, what ends up happening is I feel like time becomes like this enemy. Mm. And so you feel like if you don't have enough time, then like, why bother? Why bother doing it? I have kids now, so I don't have time to do this or that. Mm. I don't have time for my dream. And it becomes an enemy. So it just says, all right, well, I don't really care to do it anymore. Um, or I'll push it to the side or I'll get back to it later when I have more time. Mm. And so um, I think that like right there, like when you change that perspective of just like understanding, like looking at it from a more higher view and, and where time is no, no longer a, a uh, what's the word? Like it's no longer a piece of the puzzle, I guess, you know, you're just not, you're not worried about that anymore. You're just worried about getting to the result the time doesn't matter. Like I think about how many times like um, I've had somewhere that I wanted to go mm-hmm. that I didn't go because of the amount of time or the, the lack of time I felt like I had to get there. Mm. Like, and so we do that with life <laughs> of like, yeah. I want to get here, but it's going to take five, six years and I don't have the time for that. And so, um, yeah, like I think I think that's like super, that's one like big thing for me that I've noticed like with a lot of people like I've had a lot of like friends that wanted to jump into something and and they say that they need more time and I'm just like, "Yo, just take it out of the equation." And it changes a lot of things because from a higher perspective, like if you look at it from a God view, he's not seeing that, he's just seeing the result that you're going to end up in. And mm-hmm. so we have to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um and I have one more point on that uh, in regards to time. Um, I don't want to lose it. Um, yeah, so as what I've been learning is as I'm raising my kids, it's it's me understanding. Like, I want, obviously, I want generational wealth. I had a good conversation with, like, one of my, my best friends. We were on a trip, and we started talking about generational wealth. And he was talking about how he wants to, like, raise a huge accumulation of money in order to pass that on to his kids. And then, well, so what I'm learning is like, for me, like generational wealth is more of, I'm not necessarily passing on money to my kids. I'm passing on the resources, the mindset, the tools and everything that's going to allow them to accumulate wealth. And I might not be here to see that. And so I have to get in the place where I can't worry about time. I can only worry about doing what I need to do right now in order for them to be in that place to where they'll see the fruits that I'm that I sh- that I really should have had if I was already well equipped. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. That's, that's a gym. That's a gym. Um, well, you might already kind of answered it, but um, I was going to ask you what are three key components you feel um, can help people achieve their success for themselves and their family. Uh, I mean, though, you, those two things, you know, you could kind of, I guess, if you want add those in there, add one more. But yeah, what is like just three, three components that you know those that that have dreams that's yeah. watching or listening. So, I'll use the analogy of like a car for this, right? Okay. So, number one is know yourself, right? Yeah. And so, like, let's say for instance, you got to go on a trip somewhere a long trip, um, you're driving from, from California to New York, you get lent a car. If you hop inside of this car and you don't, you've never been in the car before, you don't know how it drives, you don't even know what kind of gas it takes, nothing. And you, you're expected to take this trip. You would want to at least know the car to some extent. You would mm-hmm. want to know where the blind spots are. You would want to adjust the mirrors. You would want to Make sure it's clean. Make sure it even has had its oil changed so they can get over to the destination. And so I think, like, when I look at our lives, like, our lives is like, okay, I've been lit this vehicle, this body that I have, and there's a certain result that I need to get to. But do I even know myself? Like, would I hop inside of a vehicle and try and go on a trip somewhere without knowing what kind of gas it needs? without knowing if it's been, if it's had an oil chain and had its key components cleaned out, without knowing 
how do I change the radio? How do I change the frequencies inside of the car? Like, if I don't know any of this stuff, how can I expect to take it? I'm going to break down multiple times. Mm. I'm going to have to go to a mechanic. And then I'm going to wish I had another car. And, like, mm. I feel like that's what happens in life. Like, mm. but number one, I would say know yourself. Yeah. Um, number two, I would say is um, know your result. And I say results specifically as opposed to know your purpose. Because I think a lot of people get caught up on like purpose and they define it as like this specific thing. Like I'm going to be a writer or I'm going to be a speaker or I'm going to be whatever. Right. And not to knock it. It's just this for me, it doesn't work because like I am, um, like I said, I like magic. Like I like seeing God create miracles in my life. And so what I've learned is like, what's the result that I want? What do I want to experience? Like, what do I want? I want freedom. I want time. I want to be able to spend um, whatever time I want with my kids. I want to be able to have, I want my kids to be in a certain place where they don't have to need or want. I don't necessarily care how that happens. I mean, as long as, I'll, as, long as I'm not like doing anything morally wrong, I don't care what mm. it takes for that to happen. Mm. I just care that it happens. That's the result I want. And so knowing that result now allows me to, um, allows me to simply get there by just following certain principles in my life. But that comes with me knowing myself. If I don't know myself, then I'm not going to know like what makes me tick, what makes me, what, what makes me depressed, what makes me crawl in a hole and not do anything? Like who are the friends that, um, that, uh, increase my energy versus the friends that decrease it? Like I have to know all of these things. Otherwise, I'm consistently going to be slowing myself down on the journey. Mm -hmm. like um, that. And then the last thing I would say is uh, make a decision. And so mm -hmm. uh, I dropped a video once on YouTube where I talked about um, uh, like the word decision and where it comes from. It's like the, it comes from the Latin word uh, desidere, which is to cut, literally cut off. And um, I think what a lot of people do is we don't necessarily make a decision on where it is that we want to go. And it all leads because we don't know ourselves, mm. first off. So we don't even know what decisions we need to make. And then we don't, um, what, was my, what was my second point already? Know, know yourself mm -hmm. and uh, know your result. Yeah, we don't yeah. know what we want, so we don't make decisions, the right decisions. And then what also happens is that a lot of people think they make decisions, but really they make compromises. Mm. They're not making decisions, they're making compromises because they don't know themselves and they don't know the result. So every mm -hmm. decision that they make is based off of, this is what my parents wanted me to do. I got this job because it came with these benefits and 401k and that's what my parents said, or this is what my friend said, or that's whatever said is what I need in order for me to be successful and sustainable or to live the American dream. Like, so now you make decisions based off of that information, mm -hmm. not knowing what your result is, and so really you're making a compromise because you're compromising yourself. Mm. Like yourself has something that it wants. It has a purpose. It already has something designated inside of the GPS, but you're going off course because you don't even know what it is. Mm. So, wow. yeah, those are the three, three key things I would say. Nah, I, I like I it. Go man. back and rewatch this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For those that's, you know, make sure you guys, you guys, I hope if, if you guys get a chance, rewind it, play it back. Get those notes. Um, man, appreciate you, Harold, just for, you know, dropping them gems and, and sharing with us, man. And and for those that really want to, you know, even um, get to get to know Harold, get to actually work with him. He has some stuff coming up. He have, um, I think it's a workshop, right? Yeah, we have a billion dollar blueprint um, uh, workshop. So that's going to be with uh, pastor, partner, mentor, Jonathan Belima. Um, we are we just did one recently. And uh, it was really good. We had a lot of people on it, so we're doing another one on the 28th. Okay. It's only now, seven dollars to sign up. Oh, how much? Seven dollars. Oh wow. Two hour wow. online live workshop. Wow. Where okay. We'll break down systems that we've used to build different businesses. Wow. So only you said seven dollars, right? Seven dollars. Only seven, seven. Only seven dollars, y'all. And so, you know, obviously, my people in California. You guys know, but the ones that's, you know, if you're in a different state, I'm in Texas now, you guys can literally still get on, be a part of this. Um, 
he says online. So it shouldn't be yep. an issue. <laughs> so right. definitely check it out. And when's the date again? Uh, June 28th. June 28th, guys. Yeah, June 28th. Yeah, it's in the, in the link. has all the details. Okay, it'll be in the link as well. If you guys are watching, um, the link is on the screen. But if not, for those, I will definitely put it in the um, description as well. Um, and also, uh, oh, tell them, for, the, for those that are in California, tell them about your restaurant as well where they can, you know, check, check oh, yeah. it out. For sure. So um, first restaurant is called Shoots. Shoots mm -hmm. Hawaiian. It's an Hawaiian, Hawaiian inspired um, uh, fusion uh, restaurant, uh, quick service. So there's one inside of Stanton, inside of Rodeo 39 Public Marketplace, which is right next to Garden Grove. Um, super cool spot. Definitely bring your kids out, family, whatever. Uh, the other one is in Ontario, uh, Ontario, California, uh, right by Eastville. So two spots right there. And then we also have a Latin Asian fusion spot called Buenos Migos, which is inside of Rodeo 39 as well. And then I also have a cookie shop called Sweet Cheese. It's also inside of that same same plaza. So, I love it. And, and, and shoots, I've, I've ate the food, guys. It's no lie. It's fire. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Like, um, if you like Hawaiian barbecue, which I personally don't really, um, this is <laughs> 10 times better, <laughs> in my opinion. So I definitely, definitely encourage you guys, you know, if you guys do go, um, you know, let them know. I, I guess you could say uh, I sent you guys could say, hey, I heard I heard I heard I heard uh, Harold and, and I wanted to, to um, check it out. And so also, guys, just real quick, um, just in case you're like, man, I don't know, like, OK, those stuff is good. And some of the other restaurants he listed, I don't know exactly where to go. You guys can check out his Instagram as well. Um, it was at Harold Walters. Right, that's it. Real I Walters. Oh, dot. Oh, yeah. I Walters. Sorry, wrong, yeah. wrong that. Um, but yeah, definitely check check it out, guys. Um, he has amazing things going on, um, for sure. He's he's like I said, he has man. He's one of those people you definitely definitely want to just be to sit down and talk to. And hey, you never know. You go to shoot some. He's there a lot, so you might even be able to <laughs> his brain on something. Who knows? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. But um, like always, guys, make sure you guys subscribe. Um, you know, we're on uh, every podcast platform or on YouTube. You know, you can go to a dreamer's ambition to subscribe. Um, and like always, everyone remember. So before we go, I just want to remind you parents to keep being an inspiration. Never downplay the impact that you have for your loved ones so you can conquer the chaos. See you guys. Peace. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate you.